Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to discuss the seven tools that I use in my practice. Before we get started, don't forget to click in the description below where you'll find links to the items that I talk about today, as well as links to musiclessons.com and to the gear that I use and the link to The Everyday Musician, which is a blog that comes out every Thursday. Practice is an essential part to us developing as musicians. And over my years of practicing, I have found a multitude of different tools to help me in my practice, and even those that I recommend to my students. So in today's video, in no particular order, I'm going to share those seven items that I use on a regular basis. All right, number one is a metronome. A metronome is one of those items that gets debated from time to time. And there's a whole array of metronomes that you can use. And there's one specifically as well that I like to use that is available as an app called Polynome. Because if you're looking for something that you want to use in order to get into polyrhythmic ideas, that is a very useful tool. But regardless, if you don't have something like that, even a basic metronome, even one like mine, and there's ones that are even less complex, even apps that you can download. But metronome is one of those tools that I find that we can definitely use to measure our progress. All right, number two is one that I use pretty early on, and it was recommended by a professor of mine, and that is <laughs> the Guitar Trainer. Now, this particular one, I don't know if they make it anymore, and as you can see, I keep it in the package. Unfortunately, this particular one doesn't really work anymore, but it was a CD, uh, one that was able to, um, you put CDs in and it worked, and then there was a newer one that came out after this. Now, over the years, there have been multiple releases and some upgrades. The next one that I used that came out was the Guitar Trainer 1, MPGT1. This one I don't think they make anymore. It has a rechargeable battery and it also holds about 256 or 58 megabytes. And then one of the newest ones that it came out was the Tascam's GB10. Now from what I've heard recently, these may be discontinued. So look into that to make sure. I'll have links down below just in case, but check to make sure. I'm sure you can find these used. The great thing about these is they allow you to put songs in, and this particular one has a card, uh, an SD card that you can put. I think this one came with an 8 or 16 uh, gigabyte card. And what you can do is put multiple songs on. It allows the ability to slow down the song. You can also change the pitch if you'd like. There is a built-in uh, metronome component and a tuner. And this particular one also allows you to record yourself on it. So you can record uh, and actually do multiple uh, recordings and layer it out. If you're looking for something that is maybe a little bit more accessible, uh, such as an app. There are plenty of apps out there. I know a lot of people like to use the Amazing Slowdowner. You also have another app that I like to use called AnyTune, and that allows the same function where you can loop sections, slow it down, and work on parts that seem kind of complex and things that maybe you want to take from the recording and put in your plane. All right, number three is a newer one for me, and this the particular uh, tool that I use in my practice now is something that's been out for a little while, and I actually just started using it on gigs, and that's Electroharmonics Freeze Pedal. Now, the great thing about the Freeze Pedal is that it allows the function to hold out a particular sound similar to having the sustain pedal on the piano, and it's an indefinite sound as long as you have the function. You have to make sure which function that you have set. Uh, whether or not it's the fast release or the slow or the latch. When you have the fast release, it allows for you to step on, play chord, step on, hold that particular sound, and as soon as you let go, as soon as you lift up off of the switch, the sound goes away. The slow also does the same thing, except the release is a little bit slower. And then finally, the latch allows for the function of being able to play and just let it hold without you having to have your foot on the pedal. Before this, what I would use is a drone, 
And I find that this has a great function in allowing you to hear what notes sound like over a particular chord. So if you're really trying to work on some of those altered dominant licks, then it allows you to be able to hear those over top of the chord. So it's a great tool to use in order to work out ideas. Alright guys, number four on the list is the Boss Loop Station. There's been multiple releases of this as well, and I actually had one of the really uh, large uh, loop stations, but I traded it in for the smaller version. The great thing about the loop station is it allows you to put in, and at this stage of development, it allows you to put in tons of material into it, save it, and use that either in performances or in your practice. Now, I especially like using that in my practice because I can put in chord progressions in order to work on hearing ideas over it, but I can also use it as a tool in composing as well. And that's something that I use pretty often. So of course, if you're familiar with the pedal, you know that it allows you to record, you can overdub, you can play over top of it, that way you can listen back. It also has a metronome function on it as well, or a drum beat if you prefer that. Alright guys, number five on the list is an app, and it is called Drum Genius. I use this thing pretty much every single day when I practice. And although it's a drum loop, what's different about this, as opposed to some of the other programs I've used in the past, is that it's a very real sounding drum. Now, I don't know 100% for sure if the drum sounds were actually recorded and that's what was imported in, but it sounds like it to me. And what that allows for in the app is that you can slow it down, speed it up, and even change the pitch. There are tons of different loops that you can choose from in many different styles. If you pay a one-time price, it allows you to access any of those loops at any time. Now, like I said, I use it constantly in my practice, and what I find is that it really helps me relate to the sound of a drum. So what I found over the years of using it is that I become more aware of what the drummers are doing and want to interact more and more with them. The other component to this is if you're tired of just playing with the click of a metronome, it's something that kind of livens up the practice a little bit. So give it a shot. All right, number six on the list is a camera. Now this particular camera I use is a Zoom. Uh, and this particular one is a Q4, this is an older model. Right now I'm recording this video with a Q2N by Zoom. And I recommend using a video recorder or using just an audio recorder. That way you can capture your practice sessions. Because what I tend to find is when I'm practicing is that I get caught up in my own head or there's a particular thing that I hear and I think it sounds a certain way. Either I like it or I don't like it. And when I listen back, I often find that there's ideas that I didn't even realize that I was playing. So it allows me the opportunity to grab that, listen back, and find those things that I either want to improve in my playing or those things that I found interesting and want to implement more in my playing. The other part of that is that I always take these things out to my gigs. That way I can record the performances, not only so I can have them available for people to see, but also for me to listen back and listen to how the dynamic of the group really played out. That way I can improve on things that I feel like I need to improve on, and that way if the others in the group want to improve on their playing, they can do that as well by listening back how the performance actually went down that night. Alright, so here we are, the very last item on my list. Number seven, pencil and paper. Or right, it's a pencil and a notebook, you know. The purpose of this is many things, many things. And you could also, under the paper part, also include uh, notation paper. What I found is that this allows me to document what I'm doing, what I need to work on. It's a way to mark your progress. It's a way to keep track of the things that you know that you need 
to work on. That way you're not just randomly playing through things every day without making any progress. Remember that we have to keep our practice deliberate in order to make the progress that we want. So this is always close by. That way I'm jotting down ideas. And also, like I said, the notation paper. I have tons of paper that I accumulate over the years of ideas that I write out, things that I want to remember. So always keep those handy. That way you can jot down things quickly to remember. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope that you found that useful. Don't forget to check the description below because that's where you're going to find links to the most of the items that I mentioned today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Click the notification bell so you know when the next video comes out. And thanks again for watching.